So this video might be kind of long, I'm not sure yet, but I want to tell you guys why I chose the Garmin Epix Generation 2 over something like the Galaxy Watch Series 7 that I had, as well as the, uh, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic that I have also. I've been an Apple Watch user all the way from the very first Apple Watch. And since I got every single model after that, it's kind of safe to assume that I like the Apple Watch. And I do. But eventually it just got less and less interesting, which led me into trying Galaxy Watches. The very first Galaxy Watch I owned was the third one. And well, now I have the fourth one. But the Apple Watch and the Galaxy Watch also have something in common. Suboptimal battery life. So that being said, anytime that I track long workouts using the Apple Watch or the Galaxy Watch, its battery is just not sufficient enough to last me either until the end of the day, because I go to sleep pretty late, not gonna lie, like three in the morning, so it makes sense. Uh, but also it kind of makes sleep tracking very annoying because I'm always under the pressure of, ooh, do I have enough charge to last me throughout the night? It wasn't really an issue on the Apple Watch Series 7 because it charges ridiculously fast, but it still wasn't exactly what I was looking for in a watch. So I started looking for alternatives. Which watch can I pick up that is insanely good with GPS tracking, insanely accurate with health tracking, has an AMOLED display, and battery that can last as long as possible? Because after all, the best place for a watch to be is on your wrist, not the charger. And after searching for a little bit, I stumbled across this, the Garmin Epix Generation 2. This 47 millimeter watch is built from titanium, has a sapphire screen, and it has a DLC coating. Those three things together definitely make it a very durable watch, but what about the thing that I actually care about the most when it comes to having a watch that can do all that kind of stuff? Battery life. Well, I'm glad to say this thing can last up to 16 days on a single charge. Now the price of the watch, $1,000. For a good reason though, keep watching. So now let me show you an overview of what this watch can do and then you'll understand why the price tag is what it's at. So as with many smartwatches, yeah, you can change the watch face to your own liking. You can even change the complications that show up on the watch face and you can even download third party watch faces using the Garmin Connect IQ app. The thing that I really enjoy are the actual physical buttons on the watch. You can navigate the entire watch using just these five buttons. Coming from an Apple Watch or the Galaxy Watch, which as you guys know are primarily touchscreen devices, I didn't think I would actually like using the buttons because I'm so used to the touchscreen. Funny enough, I actually prefer using the buttons and almost never use the touchscreen. In fact, if this thing didn't have a touchscreen, I'd be okay with it. Since they are physical and clicky buttons, not only is it just very consistent, but you also spend less time blocking the display with your fat finger. Now to get to the good stuff, let me show you guys the, the laundry list of sports profiles this watch has. It, it's mind blowing. So to activate the sport profiles, all you wanna do is click on this red button right here on the upper right hand corner. Now here you'll see my saved favorites. So these are the ones that I use the most currently. And I do have run, walk, electric bike. So I do really like that it has a built-in electric bike uh, profile. So that way it actually calculates calories accordingly. Then we have a normal road bike, strength, hiking. And if we keep scrolling down using this button right here, you can actually get to, you can add your own. So here we can do a multi-sport, a trail run, ultra run, treadmill, virtual run, track run. I mean, I'm not gonna name all of these. I'm just gonna keep scrolling and then uh, for you guys to look at, see maybe which ones you like the most, which ones, uh, or maybe the ones you like aren't even on here. I mean, I, I highly doubt that. This thing has so much. To make tracking your workouts even more accurate in terms of positioning, this watch has something called multi-band GPS and all satellite systems. When you enable max accuracy in a sport profile, this watch will automatically connect to multiple satellite constellations, such as GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo. But what happens if the phone that's paired to your watch dies? For example, if you're going on a multi-day hike, you're stupid and you forgot your phone charger at home. By the way, double check when you do that. Yeah, maybe. 
Uh, what happens then? Well, that's fine because the Garmin watch is completely stand alone. You don't even need to have a phone. I mean, let's be honest, everyone has a phone, but you don't need to have a phone to be able to use this watch with its fullest capability. I downloaded the entire Topo map of the US and that enables me to use the map functionality even when my phone runs out of charge. Again, let me rephrase because this is a big one. You do not need cellular connectivity. You do not need Wi-Fi. You do not need for this watch to be paired to your phone to use the actual maps because it connects directly to the satellites. So that being said, this watch can basically kind of save your life if the circumstances lead up to it. So for example, if you're hiking through some mountainous area, your phone might be of no good use because as, as we all know, hiking through the mountains, you're not really gonna get any cellular connectivity, especially if you're deep in the forest. So if you realize you maybe got lost, your phone is no good help to you. Thankfully, if you're tracking a workout, you can literally use this watch. You go into its settings and then you select track back. This watch will actually give you turn by turn directions back to the starting point of that workout. So in a workout, you'll notice this little red line, the dark red line that goes around the lake. That is where you came from. So if you want, you can track back that way by just simply turning around and then just following the map around to get to your starting location. Or you can do what is called route. To get to route, all you wanna do is just stop the workout. And then you wanna scroll down and then select back to start. You wanna click on route. And then it should give you the quickest way to your car. So now you'll see that little pink, the pink path that just lit up with a little arrow right above. Let me go ahead and zoom in to show you guys. Right there, that little white arrow right above my arrow. So that's telling me to go straight ahead and then make a left, which is the correct way for being the fastest way. Again, if you want to track back, you can. It'll just take you exactly where you came from, which is around this entire lake. So remember, track back is to get you the directions back to where you came from, the way you came from, and then route will give you the quickest way to where you started from. But what if you started hiking and you forgot to actually start the activity? Can the watch still bring you back to the start of wherever you were before you started the activity? The answer is yes. As long as you downloaded the topographical map of whatever continent you're on, yeah, you can use the map functionality basically just as an iPhone using Apple Maps, an uh, uh, Android phone using Google Maps. You have the entire map downloaded to your phone. So no matter where you got lost at, you can still find the place that you parked click on it and it'll take you straight there, again, without having any phone on you. As I've said previously, this watch can go up to 16 days of battery life. The key phrase is up to 16 days. So what setting or settings do you have to turn off to get to that estimated battery life? Do you have to turn off all of the safety features, all of the health tracking? No, you just turn off one feature, the always on display. Turning that off gets you 16 days of battery life, and in doing so, the watch will operate similar to the Apple Watch Series 4 and under. Meaning to actually view the watch face, you just flick your wrist up, or you can tap on the display, or you can press any of the five buttons located on the watch itself. Gesture mode on this watch is so accurate, I actually don't even mind leaving it on gesture mode. I don't have the always on display turned on, as you guys see right there. But just because I don't mind it doesn't mean you guys won't mind it as well. Maybe you absolutely must have the always on display. So at that point, how long does the battery last? Even then, it lasts a respectable six days. And that's with activity tracking at least one hour per day. Now, if you ask me, that's six times better than the Apple Watch that I had, at least the way I use it. But how well is the battery life when tracking continuously throughout your workouts? Maybe you're doing a triathlon or the Ironman. So if you're using the always on display and you're using uh, the multiband GPS and all satellite systems, all while having every health feature enabled, all the positioning features enabled, and you're tracking a workout, this watch will last you 15 hours. If you keep all those features on, but only turn off the always on display, that figure goes up to 20 hours. Maybe you don't care about the most pinpoint accuracy. Maybe you're running through an open field and your always on display is turned off and gesture mode is enabled. How long will it last? Well, 
42 hours of non-stop health and positioning tracking. Again, guys, keep in mind, this isn't 42 hours of just normal smartwatch mode. This is 42 hours of non-stop activity tracking. That's mind blowing. Unlike the Apple Watch, which tracks your heart rate every five minutes or the Galaxy Watch, which tracks your heart rate every 10 minutes, the Garmin Epix Generation 2 tracks your heart rate multiple times a second, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Best of all, that is actually built into the six to 16 day of battery life. Whenever I turn it off, my battery life estimates are the exact same. So in other words, you can track your heart rate 24 seven without it really impacting your battery life. So that way you get the most accurate heart rate data, not only when you're doing workouts, but just in general throughout the day. And yes, this watch will also warn you if your heart rate goes over a certain beats per minute or falls under a certain beats per minute, just like other smartwatches do as well. So it does have that safety feature included. Another feature that I used quite a bit on my Apple Watch is the ability to find your phone. In fact, that feature is also in the Galaxy Watch. So if you tap a button, your phone will start ringing and you'll be able to find it in or around your house, right? Well, the Garmin also has that feature. Best of all, it's not locked to a certain OS. It works on both Android and on iOS. To continue that point, this watch behaves identically if you have an iPhone or any Android device. The only difference is that if this watch is paired to an Android device and someone sends you a text message, you have the option for quick replies. If you pair it up with an iPhone, you don't have that option. As far as I'm aware, I've tried this both on my Apple, uh, I'm on Apple Watch, what? I tried it both on my um, iPhone and on my uh, Pixel 6 as well as my S22 Ultra and they behave identically, which is amazing for me because I go from iPhone to Android all the time. And I don't wanna to have to constantly switch watches all the time. I can keep one watch that works with both uh, phone OSs. Did you guys think I was done talking about this watch and all its features that it has? Wrong. Here are some more features that this watch has. Now to get to your quick panel, um, at least that's the way I like to call it. That's the way that many people kind of know it to be similar to the Apple Watch or the Galaxy Watch. To get to your quick panel, all you wanna do is click and hold on the upper left hand corner button. Now here you'll get to your sleep mode, turn on or off the display, power off the device, put it into battery saver. Here you'll see wallet, which is kind of uh, Garmin pay. So you can think of this as Apple pay or Google pay, basically NFC payments. Now keep going down even more clocks. So here we have my alarm clocks that, that I set, I wake up to it or the watch wakes me up because the vibration motor, like I said, is super insane. I mean, it's impossible to oversleep with this watch. You'll get to your timers. So you can set um, exactly how long that you want the timer to be. And then it'll go ahead and start counting down. Now here you'll see save your location. So for example, let's say you go on a hike or somewhere um, or just driving down the road and you see something very cool, maybe a nice waterfall. You can go into go, you can go ahead and go into quick settings and you can save this location and then it'll wait for the GPS signal. I'm inside my house right now I'm, and uh, I'm, I'm not really sure how long it's going to, going to take, but okay, that was pretty decently fast. So it'll actually show you the exact position you're in Unfortunately, I can't do that because, uh, well, I'm in the house and I can't show you guys where I'm at. But once uh, you ba you'll basically see coordinates, so north and west. Then once you're done, you click on done and then it'll go ahead and save it for you. Now here you'll see find my phone again, similar to what the Apple Watch has or the Galaxy Watch. Uh, basically, if, you, if I tap on this, it'll go ahead and ping my iPhone or uh, if you're using a, any, any Android phone, it'll also work that way. Scrolling down more, you'll get to do not disturb. So if you turn this on, you will not get any notifications from the watch itself. Here we can turn on or off the touch screen, put it into sleep mode, and again, turn display on or off. Now, if we hold this middle button down, again, always think of this middle button as the menu button within a certain uh, screen that you're looking at. So if I click and hold on the, on the middle button, here you can actually add controls or reorder the controls or just remove them entirely. So if I go ahead and um, if I go ahead and go into add controls, I can add airplane mode to that list. So if I go ahead and add that by tapping this button, I've already done that. So now if we go into quick uh, the, the quick settings, you'll see airplane mode right there. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can add or take away depending on how you like to use it. 
Now from the watch screen itself, if I click and hold on the middle button here, you'll be able to change the watch face. So in the watch face, you can choose between so many different kinds of watch faces, it's unreal. And again, you can use the Garmin Connect app or the Connect IQ app to download even more watch faces. So if I click add new, you can see this right here. And again, you can add more using the application. Scrolling further down here, you'll see clocks. Again, these are your timers, similar to the quick panel. Here you'll see the history. So you can, uh, the history of activities or any kind of uh, records that you did or the totals, the options within that options. So this watch has settings within settings. It'll take a little bit to get used to once you get this watch, but I promise it's easy. It'll it may, it'll take you probably one or two days max. So here you'll see the activities that I've done using the history function. Again, not the, uh, I don't run the fastest. I'm just getting started. So don't roast me in the comments, but I also, I am using the Garmin coach. So you can actually download a coach to your watch and uh, that coach will kind of, uh, it's basically like an actual real life coach, except on the watch. So it'll tell you uh, when to run, when to take a break, how fast to run, how many steps per minute you should be achieving, uh, what kind of heart rate zone you should be in. It's it's crazy. I'm telling you guys, this watch is definitely for your sports enthusiasts out there. So if we see if we keep scrolling down, you'll also get to settings. So here are your activities and apps. So these are all the activities that you've downloaded to the watch. You can download even more using the Garmin Connect IQ app. Alerts and notifications. So here you'll see smart notifications. So the general use or during activity. So you can actually separate, huh, do I want notifications on all the time or do I want, do I want notifications on uh, during only general use but not during activity. Now here in this section, you can actually add any sort of accessory that you want that is compatible with Garmin, such as a, uh, a chest uh, heart rate monitor. So here we actually see all the sensors that are built into um, the watch itself. So here we see the heart rate monitor, the, the pulse oximeter, the compass, the altimeter, the barometer, or the club sensor. So here you can add different ones depending on if they work with Garmin or not. Uh, most of them do. I'm just going to be honest. A lot of them do simply because Garmin is a huge name in the fitness industry. Here you'll get to your map settings. So the map manager is where you'll be able to download different sort of uh, maps. So here we see the course view for Americas, course view for Middle uh, East and uh, or Europe, Middle East and Africa, uh, the Pacific in the ski view. If I click on top of active maps, this is the one that I already downloaded. And if I scroll down, you can add, um, it'll go ahead and search for the Wi-Fi signal of your house. Now, once it's done that, you can download the entire continent of Africa, 4.4 gigabytes. Here we see that we have 17.5 gigs available. There is 32 gigabytes built in, so that's good. Uh, New Zealand, uh, China, Europe, Hong Kong, Japan, uh, Korea, this one, uh, this one, South America. Hey, I know that one, Taiwan and this one. So basically you can download the whole world or until your watch runs out of uh, storage. Here are your music controls, the connectivity. So do you want the watch to be paired to your phone? Uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is only good for really downloading uh, maps. You don't really need Wi-Fi for this watch to even function properly. It doesn't, I mean, if I, if I turn off Wi-Fi right now, nothing is gonna change. So until I need to download a different map, then it'll ask me for Wi-Fi. So here we have audio prompts, user profile, safety and tracking. So here we have incident detection. So I actually need the app to set this up. But what, the, what this will do is if it notices you fell, similar to the Apple Watch, it'll go ahead and ping your uh, your contacts or the contacts that you have chosen, as well as give them uh, GPS directions uh, right to you. And even if you're on the way to the hospital, it'll actually still give those directions to your family members as you're going to the hospital in that, uh, in that ambulance. 
And here we can actually add emergency contacts right here and group track. What group track does is uh, it'll give you uh, your location to your emergency in emergency contacts as you're doing a workout or as you're uh, active, you know, out and about, maybe you're on a hike, you want to let everyone know you're good. They can actually track you that way. Here is health and wellness. So here we have the heart rate, the pulse oximeter, the move alert. So if you're standing still or you're sitting down for too long, the watch will tell you to move again, very similar to the Apple watch and galaxy watch the goal alerts and the move iq if we keep going down navigation settings so here we see the data screen for navigation the heading and uh well this is a good way to showcase how uh notifications will look whenever they get onto your watch and apparently i'm getting a lot of them for some reason right now but to dismiss it you just want to click this button here you'll just dis you'll dismiss that one and dismiss this one here we have the alerts as well. So we can have an alert for the final distance, the final ETE, or if we're going off course, it'll actually tell you, hey, you're not on the course, go back or you're gonna get lost. Here we see the turn prompts. So if a turn is coming up soon, the watch will vibrate and let you know. Here we have the power manager. So here you can put it onto battery saver mode or you can choose different power modes. And you guys have already seen this, pretty familiar. You can even add your own and customize the settings to your own liking. Now here we get to system settings. You can change the language, the time, in terms of uh, actual time formats, the display settings. So here it's pretty cool. So for example, let's say during uh, activity, um, I want the always on display to show. So I don't have to keep flicking my wrist. I can kind of glance over it and see. So that way I put the always on display to on. But during general use, I want the always on display to be off because I'm not really glancing at my uh, watch you know, all that much for it to be that important. So I keep it off and it also gives me that 16 days of battery. Now for general use, you can also change the brightness. So right now it's on the very smallest uh, or smallest setting. And I think this is actually fine. I mean, it does get pretty bright if you need it to be. But honestly, I found that keeping it on the lowest setting is is really good. I mean, it's very similar to the Apple Watch in terms of brightness. I don't mind it at all. Here we get the alerts the wrist gesture. So if you who, if you do have the always on display turned off, the wrist gesture will automatically turn on. Or if you want, you can completely turn it off and just use the tapping method to wake up the watch or by pressing any of the buttons. And here we have the timeout screen or the timeout. So after eight seconds of the watch being lit up, it will automatically uh, either turn off or, going, or go into that always on display mode. And then during sleep, I have the brightness set to the lowest as always uh, the timeout four seconds because i don't really need to be staring at my watch all that long again if you go into sleep mode uh using that quick panel the screen will automatically uh, go into um, off mode or in other words it'll turn off the always on display here we have the touch settings so during general use do you want the touch screen to be on or off during activity do you want the watch screen to be uh or the watch to be a uh, touch screen to be on or off <laughs> I didn't have enough coffee this morning, I apologize. And then during sleep, do you want the touch screen on or off? Going further down, we have satellites. And here you can choose, do you want the watch to only use GPS? Do you want the watch to be using all systems? This is the, the, the default. Or do you want all systems plus multiband, which increases the accuracy? Uh, Ultra Track is the best battery, but lower accuracy. So if you really need that battery life to get you to the finish line, uh, this one would be the best one to, to, um, to choose. Here we have sounds and vibrations. So you can customize the intensity of the vibration or the sound, the sleep mode, do not disturb. Now for the hotkeys, you can actually choose uh, which hotkey you want to place to do what. So for example, if I hold start whenever I'm on the watch face, it'll go ahead and start navigation. If I hold back, it'll bring me to uh, back to the display. If I hold down, it'll go ahead and save the location. If I hold start and down, which is this one and this one, it will go ahead and actually turn on or off the uh, the touch screen. So for, as, for example, boom and boom. So here is where you set up the hotkeys and go ahead and change uh, the USB mode. So you can either do a file transfer or through the actual Garmin uh, Connect uh, desktop app. Here we get to reset as well as software update. And here is about the watch. So, I mean, this goes into so much detail. It's so much, 
so many settings it's crazy like i said it might look a little too complicated but i promise you give it two days of playing around with it especially if you already used a garment before this is old news to you but to me uh this is new and uh even i got used to it within a couple days i mean it's crazy the amount of settings this watch has <sighs> so as you guys may have noticed, uh, this watch is definitely not a slouch. In fact, if I went over every feature this watch had in detail, this video would be well over an hour long, even with the editing. Another thing I want to go over is how do workouts and activity tracking look whenever you've completed them. You can either look at them directly from the watch itself, or if you want a larger screen, you can also open up the Garmin Connect app, and this app will tell you absolutely everything. It's very similar to Apple Health and Samsung Health. Once you've completed a workout, you'll see some information such as the calories burned, the running pace, and the time it took you, and even a map showing you exactly where you were during that activity. For even more info, you can hit this little button here, and you'll be blown away at all the information captured just from the watch. I mean, really, it goes into so much detail. So what is the Garmin Epix 2? In my opinion, and it's really the reason I like it so much, is because it's a GPS fitness tracker first and a smartwatch second. So what does that mean? Well, no watch can do everything absolutely perfectly, especially on a display that's much smaller than your phone. So to make an amazing watch, you have to first focus on what you as a company want the watch to be. Do you want the watch to excel in being a social smartwatch while being good at health tracking? Or do you want the watch to excel in health tracking while being a good social smartwatch? If you try to do both, you're just gonna end up being a jack of all trades, a master of none. The Garmin Epix Gen 2 is perfect for those that are serious about health and activity tracking. And watches like the Apple Watch or the Galaxy Watch is perfect for those that want a smartwatch first while also having some good health tracking capabilities. So guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop me a comment down below. And if you are new here, consider subscribing because I will be doing much more smartwatch uh, reviews, uh, fitness watch reviews, uh, health tracking reviews, and all that good stuff coming along with this channel. And um, that's it. If you guys enjoyed today's video, leave that like. Again, if you have any questions, drop them down below. This was Bark from Markstech. Adios.